Thank you very much, Secretary Abaya, for your very kind introduction. Excellencies and members of the Diplomatic Corps, guest negotiators, Vice President Kala, Governor Yusuf, Deputy Foreign Minister Saiti, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Dajani, Mr. Othman, Mr. Gorman, Undersecretary Segis, representatives of international organizations, participants of the International Negotiators Conference, our delegates and guests, a warm welcome to the Philippines. Thank you for coming to our country. This international conference is timely. Mindanao is poised for peace. Whether we achieve it in the near future remains to be seen. For sure, there is more work to be done. But the efforts we have made over the last nine years have brought us closer to achieving long-term peace in the region. The sad irony of Mindanao is that it is a food basket for the country, but it has some of the highest hunger in our nation. It has large fields of high productivity, yet also it has six of our 10 poorest provinces. The prime reason is the endless Mindanao conflict. A comprehensive peace has eluded us for half a century. Unless we as a people come to terms with Mindanao, we will never attain our full promise as a nation, much as America had to overcome its baggage of racial inequity and prejudice in order to become the great democracy that it is today. Thus, at the start of my term as president, I sought to arrive at a national consensus on the principles to guide our search for peace. I offered the following for our people to consider. One principle is that our ultimate objective should be both peace and development. A second principle is that our framework should be based on constitutionality, national sovereignty, and territorial integrity. A third principle is that our society is a multi-ethnic one which should be founded on social justice for all and the institutionalized accommodation of ethnic traditions. Christian and Muslim, Chinese and Tisoy, Tagalog and Cebuano, these are but a few of the names to which the Filipino responds in a wondrous testimony to our rich and varied heritage as a nation. To these three broad principles, we added a fourth. In our search for peace, there is no role for terrorism or inhuman brutality. Such acts must be universally condemned. Looking back over the last nine years, we have broken down barriers and we have deterred terrorist activities by encouraging people to focus on building better lives for themselves and future generations rather than destroying them. We have done this to the use of soft power. Soft power has provided economic opportunity, better access to healthcare and education, and basic necessities for better lives, including clean water, food, housing for the people of Mindanao. We are making small but important steps toward long-term peace. We always knew that from day one, this is a process it will take time and patience. But what is important is that we are continuing to make progress in the right direction. In our 10-point medium-term Philippine Development Plan, which carries the acronym Beat the Odds, B-E-A-T-T-H-E-O-D-D, one of the T, two T's, means terminate the hostilities with the MILF towards a just conclusion of our peace process. And indeed, since 2003, there has been a ceasefire between the government and the MILF. 
And I think our three levels of monitors for that, the community-based monitor, the monitor made up of members of the government and the MILF, and the more international monitoring team. We have signed many agreements over the last nine years. The various agreements are vital towards ensuring the implementation of the ceasefire. And hopefully, all of these agreements will come together and bring us closer to the completion of the peace process. We recognize from the start that peace requires two-way dialogue and mutual respect and cannot be achieved just to the barrel of a gun. It is through our commitment to this belief that we have made significant progress in the peace process. What is needed now is recognition by all parties that a political settlement will translate the peace on the ground to a permanent and just and comprehensive peace and lead to better economic prospects and a brighter future for the people of Mindanao. That is the best result for everyone. Yes, there are political dynamics. Let us sort them out with the utmost sobriety, patience, and restraint. But we cannot do it alone. That is why we have worked so hard to bring an international consensus to provide moral, financial, and diplomatic support for peace in Mindanao. The many countries represented here today and so many others now have a vested interest in peace in Mindanao. And with the help of our Muslim brethren around the world, we're establishing a new paradigm, establishing a new paradigm for peace between religions in Mindanao. And I thank the Bishop's Ulama Conference for helping us to move that dialogue forward. When I became president, I declared a policy of all-out peace in Mindanao. As president, I have fought every day in office to bring that peace to that great island. And I will continue to do so until the last moment of my term as president. And maybe even beyond, because as congressman, congresswoman, I will file the bills that I feel are needed in order to bring just and lasting peace to Mindanao. To all of you, for all your support, for peace, maraming, maraming salamat.